Good afternoon. Thank you for joining Step CG in our webinar today and building a winning team with eSports and your network. Today, our feature host is Heath Price. He is um, with UK. He has been with UK for over 10 years um, and he has spent um, he has spent the last 10 years as a flagship um, at, over 10 years at two flagship research universities, both LSU and UK. Additionally, he's had the opportunity to work in the private sector as a partner in many institutions across the United States. In his current role at the University of Kentucky, he serves as the associate CIO in ITS. Most recently, he has been a core member of the cross-functional campus team at the U University of Kentucky that is charged with building a comprehensive and thought approach to engaging gaming and esports through the university environment. We're very happy to have him here today, and he has a lot of experience with esports, and I'm sure that you'll find him very engaging, and hopefully you'll have a lot of questions to ask him today as he goes through his, um, his presentation. Uh, along with, um, uh, if you'll make sure to put questions in the Q&A, um, we'll get to your questions. If there are questions that are relevant to the topic he's discussing right at the time, he will answer those questions throughout, or he'll also be able to take Q&A at the end of his presentation. Step CG has been around since 2014, and we are an industry-leading company. Um, we have um, been serving and supporting our customers with IT needs and strategies, and we're happy to be delivering this uh, webinar to you today. And hopefully, we'll be able to answer a lot of your needs for esports as well as a lot of other networking problems and um, solutions that you may have. We're going to go ahead and turn this over to Heath and let him get started. Thank you, Heath, again for being with us today, and welcome. And if you can go ahead and get started and let us all know about all the different things that you can help us with, with growing a team and uh, starting a new team in eSports. Welcome. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, thanks so much for giving me a chance to do this. And um, it, it's really fun to get to reconnect with you. I know we've had a few chances to, to kind of visit about the space and talking about eSports and, and video games um, and really excited to get to, to share some thoughts with this group. And, um, and and would love, as you pointed out, some Q&A and just some uh, dialogue, right, that we could create uh, with those that are able to listen today. Um, Joey, if you could go to uh, maybe that, that intro slide. Uh, thank you. Um, a few things uh, just to kind of open up that um, felt really relevant today. To, to Michelle's point, um, my background in and around higher ed has been at, at two um, kind of major universities. Um, I worked at LSU for uh, close to 10 years at different points um, in the early 2000s, and now uh, I've arrived at University of Kentucky. But I've also has a, had a chance in some of that um, working across the higher ed space with different universities um, to spend a lot of time in and around communities. And many times, whether it's a flagship university like UK or certainly a, a big university um, with research like Louisville, or places like Moorhead and um, Western and Eastern Kentucky here in the state. Um, what you find around campuses and universities is you find really um, interesting communities that are full of um, school systems with K through 12, high schools, middle schools, elementaries. And uh, there's a really a real symbiotic relationship that ends up happening around these educational environments and how the universities and the, the K, to, K through 12 organizations work together and hopefully find ways to, to be partners uh, in community. So one of the things um, uh, as I talk today about kind of our approach on esports and thinking about the video game space going forward, um, we'll just to share some insights on what we're doing in our approach. Um, but I would I would certainly layer in everything that I'm going to talk about for us has, has kind of been about how do we connect and relate uh, to that to that educational environment that we're around in. Lexington and across the state of, of Kentucky. Um, so I'm going to talk a bit about our approach. I want to talk a little bit about just how you might approach core principles um, that can impact your school, uh, the group that you're involved with educationally uh, when it comes to the space of esports. Um, and then I want to offer up just some resources that I have found very helpful or that I've run across and have been very helpful to 
peers of mine, um, whether it's in the higher ed space or even those that I've gotten to know across um, K through 12, but I would say very specifically across the, the high school space, the nine through 12 um, that have proven uh, really beneficial. So I'd love to share some of that. And again, if uh, if there are questions here, it'd be great to, to talk about. Um, uh, one thing that I've found really helpful um, because I, I get the question a lot and obviously uh, nobody's starting out here asking questions, but I'm gonna gonna make a little a little inference to jump out to jump in um, is kind of where we got our start. Um, and in talking about our approach to esports, um, it's been a really helpful story for me to tell to kind of help put some context on why we're paying attention to esports and the video game space and, and why it's become an important focus for us. Um, president Eli Capilouto, who's the president at the University of Kentucky right now and has been with UK for getting close to a decade, um, sits on the NCAA's Board of Governors. And so over the last couple of years, um, he has sat in a number of different meetings and sessions as the NCAA has taken a look at the esports space and, and really done quite a bit of due diligence on how they would understand esports as it relates to the other um, intercollegiate uh, athletic teams that, that the NCAA sponsors and, and uh, pays attention to. Uh, President, President Capilouto is a, a really dynamic leader um, and has a excellent leadership team that reports to him and um, it's a pretty tight-knit group. There are a handful of people that he spends quite a bit of time with on our campus. And in coming back from um, one of those sessions with the NCAA about two and a half years ago now, he engaged that executive team and asked the question, um, I know how the NCAA is talking about this. I hear other presidents and chancellors talking about it, but I want to know what does this mean to us? What are we already doing? What uh, could we be doing? What is happening within our student population? And so he really charged that executive leadership group with finding that out. And, um, and through that kind of initial conversation that he had, um, it gave us an ability uh, with our executive vice president for finance administration, Dr. Eric Monday. Um, he gave us kind of an ability in the CIO's office, of which I report, uh, and a handful of other people to create a really big table and to start um, initially just having some of that dialogue on our campus about what we were doing, what was happening, um, what the students were doing, what their interests were. And then um, it really helped us ask some, uh, as we learned what we were doing, it, it started uh, this path of us asking a lot of questions. Um, and what could esports be for us? What are video games in the context of our student population? Uh, who are they meaningful to? Why are they meaningful? Um, and so I, I'll kind of walk down this list, but one thing I, I would really like to share is we spent about a year doing that exercise before we ever spent one dollar or before we ever really committed a resource outside of time, which certainly does have a cost associated. But before we ever spent a hard dollar on our esports and video game kind of uh, program moving forward, we did a lot of investigation and a few of the things that that we came out of that with that have defined our approach is um, we believe that esports and video games can really help us create a new environment for belonging and wellness. And I'll talk a little bit more about that as I, as I go through these slides. Um, we believe and, and have seen already um, that there are some opportunities to explore research opportunities within our faculty, um, that there is an interest there um, as it relates to what video games are, uh, the competitive side of esports, but also just the, the commonplace that video games kind of hold in our culture right now, and certainly with our young people, uh, that could lead to some really interesting research opportunities down the road. Um, we have identified for ourselves uh, that we want to be a thought leader around this space, and we think that esports and video games touch on important social topics uh, that as a flagship university uh, give us some great opportunities to engage our community. Um, we think that uh, in, we have really a neat opportunity here to engage broader populations of students. And so I'll talk a little bit about that within our approach. Um, but when we consider esports and video games, we are definitely trying to look at our full base of 30,000 students um, and how we might engage them. Or uh, certainly we're not going to be able to touch each one individually as it relates to this topic. Um, but that doesn't mean it can't be our goal or our desire to make efforts to do that. And so 
um, we have really have really put some emphasis on that. And then uh, the last one I put here, and it's just very relevant to our mission as a university, um, is we think uh, that esports can help us build a presence and a better uh, dialogue with our international community. And uh, we have a, a large representative population of students um, within China. Uh, we also are in a number of different countries uh, in students that both come here uh, from abroad to learn and then also um, engage with us uh, through digital means. And, and certainly this COVID timeline uh, has created a new set of challenges within that, but um, it has remained and, and will remain a focus for us as we think about this topic. So uh, kind of um, coming out of those those kind of overarching principles, and again, those were really built out of a broad table for us on our campus, um, bringing together people from the student and academic life side uh, at the table. We have folks from our athletics enterprise that are are there more listening than than uh, uh, very actively involved because from that perspective right now, it doesn't fit squarely or, or directly within the athletics uh, venture, but they have a strong interest in understanding and learning about the community outreach efforts and and how that might approach um, how that even might be an approach for them in the future. And then thinking about areas like um, uh, as we talk a lot about our mental health and disability services, other student populations where we feel like um, esports and video games can be a portal into those communities. We, we really started to develop what I would kind of call our North Star, our vision for esports. And so I've laid it out here. Um, a few of the, the, the highlights that we developed as a team. One was we really want to be collegiate and not as much focused on intercollegiate early on. So one of the things that means for us is um, that we have a close um, kind of partnership, day to day communication with our esports club on campus, and they run and manage varsity teams. Um, scratch that, I shouldn't say that. They run and manage teams. They aren't what I would call varsity teams. They are competing um, within clubs, they're competing within competitions, and they more often than not are running up against schools that do do varsity teams. But a lot of what they're doing um, is really building time as a club community and trying to cover different games, get different students involved. So um, we've put a lot of emphasis on this collegiate, on this community, and then we've really encouraged them and, and trying to find ways to assist them where we can with the resources they need, but they kind of are the ones that take the lead on going and competing in different uh, competitions and, and in that environment. So we have a really good working relationship, and again, we communicate with them on, on a daily uh, certainly weekly basis. We really want to build community as I've talked about uh, or shared here in opening, um, but we're not as interested in that rivalry. And so even in aspects where our club team are going out there and competing, um, we're talking a lot about how that community can be built. We, we help stream some of the events that they do, and I'll talk about that here in a little while, um, so that we can get more people that are engaged in that uh, competition, we can get more people talking, get more people involved in in the community within a certain game, whether it's League of Legends, it might be Super Smash Ultimate, um, it might even be a game like Overwatch um, or Rocket League, and, and we want to help find ways to, to build up those communities as we continue to do this. Um, we are interested in finding and establishing campus-wide academic pathways, and so some of our first year was spent going out to our colleges and uh, asking them what they thought about the space. We were really surprised to learn how many of our faculty and, and instructors already had some engagement and interest in and around the video game space and were very intrigued by the growth of esports. And we're doing some things in their lesson planning and in their curriculum uh, that touched on the topics. And so it create, it's created some really neat dialogue for us. Uh, we're anticipating some opportunities where that faculty and, and instructor might be looking at certificates down the line that touch on this topic. Um, and one of the things we've talked a lot about um, with them is the fact that much of this, um, this uh, topic is very co-curricular. And so it gives us an opportunity for uh, these different academic and uh, pathways within the faculty to be working across maybe curriculum, across discipline and talking with one another, which has been really exciting to see and, and fun to be a part of, kind of be a, a fly on the wall on some of those conversations. And I think that topic really leads into our thoughts around 
the future of thinking about corporate and professional thought leadership. So how we as a university engage some of our partners, um, maybe those that exist today, um, uh, those that might not exist yet, and, uh, and maybe people that we want to be talking with endemically in the space. And when I say endemic, I mean uh, partners um, that do uh, equipment, produce PCs, maybe that's a Dell, maybe that's a HyperX that are out there doing the things that are very uh, closely associated with video games and with the esports segment. But it also might mean talking to other partners uh, that have an interest in, in learning about the space and have an interest in engaging our population uh, like the UK Federal Credit Union is a really good example that has stepped up for us in, in recent months uh, or somebody like Kroger um, or Coca-Cola partners that are uh, very active in our community and are, are very intrigued uh, about this space. So uh, a few of the things for us as we've as we've kind of worked through this, I mentioned that first year of learning, uh, we really launched our program and, and began to, um, I'd say, be more active in our approach uh, last fall. So we really started, um, had an announcement in November of 2019. Uh, we announced a partnership with a company called Gen G, um, which is a esports uh, company. Esports, uh, they have esports teams and uh, they have a presence um, globally. They're in Shanghai, China. They've got an office, a major headquarter office in Seoul, South Korea. And then they also were in Los Angeles and uh, have various people throughout the United States. Um, and so our partnership with them, that is through our media rights partner, JMI Sports on our campus uh, that we work very closely with, has kind of given us a very much a foundation for how we're working out on this programming. And so things like our eSports speaker series where we're bringing together um, some thought leaders, those might be within our campus community, people that work on our campus, people that are involved in that academic side that I mentioned, but it also might be um, people that are involved in game development, uh, other sectors of the space, um, even some of that competitive, getting a sense of how these uh, these game publishers are interested in the future of competitive esports, bringing those speakers into these sessions, streaming it on our Twitch channel, and, and uh, really inviting that community uh, in our local marketplace for sure, but certainly because it's streamed, it could be from anywhere, um, is really important to us in creating that dialogue. We ran a tournament in April um, of this year. Um, the tournament was meant to be in person, but COVID uh, obviously pivoted all kinds of programming just like this, where we're doing more and more things online. So we took our Hoops at Home tournament online, um, invited uh, people from our current student population and our future students, so high schoolers, uh, people that were uh, interested in playing NBA 2K in a competitive, uh, fun environment, uh, and then also our UK alums and our Big Blue Nation invited them, filled out brackets, and uh, had those uh, had that tournament play over four nights, and it was just a lot of fun. It was really pretty casual, but it also got pretty competitive as we got further through the bracket. It was a great way for us to to kind of uh, connect to that community to do some programming and kind of go through the paces of what it looks like and what it feels like. And uh, it was just a lot of fun how many of our, our current UK students really got into it, even just watching the stream. And um, that was a really great way for us to engage Twitch and, and get some profile out there and, and how we're doing that as a university. And then, um, and then a, a different example of that, the bottom graphic is our Cat Smash Clash. That's something we did more this summer and this was actually something that the students, our, our eSports club, um, a group of students that are very involved in playing Super Smash Ultimate, actually kind of ran themselves. And so they ran the tournament, they put it on. We helped them have some resources with which they could do that. Um, we helped them get the bracket set up for the first tournament. We helped them uh, get the, uh, the key to be able to broadcast it on Twitch. And then they ran that throughout the summer for seven consecutive weeks. And, um, they did it themselves. The students were a part of putting it on. Uh, we invited our incoming freshmen, our incoming students to come be a part of it and compete. And actually the first week of the tournament, it was only incoming UK freshmen that participated. Um, and then they uh, they were involved in it for the successive weeks that the students did it. And it was a really fun example of how our students can engage kind of in that tournament environment and how they can put on an event and gave them a great chance to learn and, and be really active. So uh, a little bit of different programming for us 
that are, are the ways that we want to engage those communities moving forward and really the ways we want to create more programming as we get towards this fall and into the spring. Um, certainly in the COVID environment, it's going to be more it's going to be more online and it's going to be more engaging digitally and um, we're really excited about it. So uh, I've talked a lot. I'm not sure, Michelle, I'm um, just curious. Have there been any questions that have popped up as I kind of ran through that for about 15 uh, no minutes? No questions so far. OK, super. So a few things I'd love to offer um, and talk about as we've approached building an esports program, but I think are have really proven relevant in a lot of my conversations with K through 12 um, folks that are administrators at different schools. Again, uh, mainly 9 through 12 is where I've had a lot of my dialogue, so I really shouldn't say K through 12. It's really been more high school related, uh, but but helping um, just talk with different folks at high schools about ways they might be able to zoom out of thinking about esports. Um, certainly there there's a, a need to form teams. Uh, um, some schools are looking at ways to find coaches to uh, figure out ways to engage those coaches. And I'll talk about that here in a second to get them involved in helping to coach up their teams. Um, but one thing that I found here in Kentucky and that I've I've had in di dialogue and discussion with other high school athletic associations around the United States is you're going to be limited more than likely on which games you can play. Um, if 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 uh, leagues are forming up within your high school, if somebody's bringing you um, a league to participate in and your uh, high school athletic association is really excited about it or are geared up to do it, uh, more than likely they're, they're going to tell you there are only certain games that, that you can play in. And uh, one of the things we found in our population is in those really competitive games like Overwatch or uh, League of Legends, that's a small population of students. But again, the more students we're talking to and talking with, we're finding there many of them are playing some to, some sort of game. It might be a mobile game, something like Candy Crush. Um, they might be playing something that uh, is really off the beaten path, like they're really into indie games. Um, it might be something that uh, is just really uh, fun and and uh, something that they grew up with, like uh, playing a, a Nintendo Switch and playing games like Super Mario Brothers or Mario Kart or other things. So gaming can be really broad, and um, and that for us is, is kind of why I, I list out these five points. Uh, number one, I just really always encourage you start with your students and uh, get them to the table on day one. Um, when we did that, in our case, what we found was our esports club um, had some cool things going and was really uh, was really trying to build their own community. But they were also a great connection for us into the broader student population and helped us get connected with other students that might not be actively involved in the esports club, but wanted to be involved in some dialogue and discussion around video games. And so that's helped us as we've sought input and uh, and tried to talk about things uh, around our esports space. We're in the midst and process right now of um, having an esports space, a video game space that's getting created. Uh, it's going to be about 4,500 square feet in um, inside a garage uh, that is fit out for this space um, on, on uh, one part of our campus. And so because of that dialogue and discussion with our students, we've been able to engage a broader student population and how that space has come to be and uh, what it's going to look like and uh, what types of things that they wanted to see in it. So that's been, um, I think, paramount for us. Day one uh, it was very important. Our president really challenged us to do it, and we're so glad that we did. It, it's kept some some great dialogue going. Um, I would really involve, I would really, uh, um, emphasize and encourage you to lean into areas of focus at your school. So if you're K through 12, even if you're middle school, um, and I know even some elementaries have this where they have uh, areas of focus, right? Maybe it's in the arts, maybe it's a STEM focus, um, maybe it's just really uh, successful clubs in and around your school where people, where students are really actively engaged. I know growing up for me, it was something like Key Club, uh, maybe it's something like student government that's really active and pulls st other students together. But we have found that finding these areas of emphasis um, has proven to be a uh, help us find more uh, interested populations, students that really intrigued by this. I know in, in UK's case, um, we have some really strong uh, clubs around communications and also around engineering uh, and a focus on um, 
mechanical and, and uh, um, civil engineering. And so those clubs for us have been, again, those different student populations. But, but find uh, and lean into areas of focus for your school where maybe esports can be an excuse to engage them and where esports might uh, be a, an entry point into the dialogue that helps you zoom out and look more at what the, the school's trying to achieve and then start asking the question of how can esports maybe be a part of the solution to what that what that goal is or what that focus is. Um, number three, I would really strongly encourage anyone if, if this is your first time you've talked or heard about esports, um, or this is the, the first engagement you picked up this this webinar that Step CG is offering and you're like, man, I really want to talk more. Um, know that there are a lot of great resources out there and I'd be remiss if I didn't say Michelle and the team uh, that I've engaged with on the Step CG side. They're going to talk more about it here in a few minutes, but they are a great resource. Um, Google is a great resource. There's some great things out there that you can get your hands on and I'll share some links here later, but I just really encourage you to uh, find some people that are that will talk about it and uh, and pick their brain and build that network because as I point out here in this next point for networking is really key and it's how we've we've helped to build kind of our our vision that I referenced earlier but quite honestly um it, we're just at the beginning and and we're not there's no stopping point here that networking and that community of people we're listening to and people that are are speaking into what our vision is are going to help us continue to grow and change and that's a big part of of how we're going to emphasize uh, where we go from here is going to be more and more dialogue, more and more staying relevant um, because we think uh, it's, and I'll talk about it here in a second, but it's going to be um, something we will be looking at more and more into the future. We think the stats really prove and bear that out. Um, and then really, uh, this kind of goes without saying, but use your local community. So wherever you are located, think about those that are around you. It might be a high school or two that's a great rival that you've got a good relationship with, that you love working with um, in the area. It might be local colleges. You know, if you've got a, a university, a college in your area uh, that's within a drive, um, you know, sooner than later, we're going to be able to get outside our houses again and be able to go get coffee or lunch with people. Certainly find those those places, find those, those local community colleges, um, find the university, uh, find that high school, find people you can connect with and talk with. And then um, I referenced here area developers. I've really just been blown away in the more places that we've gotten to talk to about the, de the pockets of developers that exist out there that are developing, might not be specifically a video game, but are developing on technology. They're developing uh, within a platform like Salesforce. They're developing for um, different tools or solutions, software solutions that are used um, and, and oftentimes when you find those developers, you end up finding a pretty cool network. And I have found you often find people that are kind of interested in games and have a, maybe it's just a hobbyist interest, but can be a great connection for you and people that you might want to get involved in your local and area school that you're working with. When we, um, when we think about the future and when I talk about uh, why we believe this is something that we will be paying attention to in our future. Um, there's a lot of data out there and there's a lot of stats out there. This this group, um, the Electronic Software Association has been one of my favorite. They put out an annual document that kind of summarizes the, the video game space more at large and they do talk a bit about esports and their data. Um, but one of the things that we have, have uh, in digging through and speaking with them a bit over the last two years, one of the things we found really interesting is just the population um, around the United States that are playing games and the age demographics um, that are involved in it. And when you look at the stats today, uh, the average age of a woman that's a, that's playing games uh, is around 34. The average age for a man is around 32. And so when we think about, um, uh, let's say, millennials today, and those that are going to be having families, maybe they've already started or will be starting. We think about our future middle schoolers and high schoolers that are to come. I think we're going to see more and more households that are playing games. Um, you see the stat here on the left, 75% of Americans have at least one gamer in their household. Um, I mean, I think that's a, that's a really conservative number when we think into the future. 
And so when we talk about this, this segment, when we think about kind of our tent pole and our initiative, you know, we are definitely trying to think about our future student populations across the next decade. And so we're certainly, it's, it's fun and it's really engaging to be able to talk to our students today. And one of the things we do in that dialogue is we challenge them to think about what are your future students going to be interested in? How are we working together to create some of this programming and to engage these communities that help us build a foundation that where we can engage and be authentic to these future gamers that are going to be coming to our campus? And I think at your schools, at your middle schools, high schools, you're going to see the same thing. More and more students coming that desire to engage in gaming and see it um, as an area of strong interest that can really be a portal into future interest and, and future engagement and engagements. And so as we think about the next slide that I have um, and kind of talking about you know, what we've led into, right, is thinking about our academic pathways and how those can lead to professional opportunities. Um, those same stats that you can find out there will quickly tell you that both in the United States and globally, uh, that being a competitive esports gamer, um, and, and we have engaged quite a quite a bit of our students. We've we've engaged a lot a lot of dialogue about those students that are really involved and in, and uh, interested in watching League of Legends uh, as a worldwide competition in their premier teams in Korea, premier teams in the United States that play those games. Overwatch is very similar. Uh, where those games are being broad, broadcast on, on TV. The NBA has got a really competitive 2K league that you can find on cable TV. Um, and actually, uh, uh, just recently, we're, we're getting close to their, their championships and their, the culmination of their tournament just a few weeks ago, uh, where they brought that to, to the end of the season. Um, but the, these leagues um, are very competitive, and not many people, not many players are going to make these leagues and be the tip top esports competitors. But there are a lot of jobs that are being created in and around this sector. And so um, when we think about that future and when we talk with our students, we want them thinking about right how the, some of these future academic pathways might also be uh, ways to lead to professional opportunities. And if you're interested in, in marketing, if you're interested in social media, um, if you're interested in technology, uh, there's a good chance that the future of esports and video games already offers a path and in the future will even offer maybe a, a more uh, robust and uh, clear path to career opportunities that these students might be interested in. So um, we've we've spent some time doing our due diligence, learning more about uh, these sectors, obviously engaging with companies and that, that uh, networking that I was talking about earlier is a great way to do that. But I think when you when you think about your middle schoolers and your high schoolers, when you think about um, the, those populations, those students are really interested in this sector too. They're going to be paying attention to these video games and the competitive esports, and it can be a great way to uh, entre a great entree into more dialogue about future careers. Um, we've had some some former UK students just as we've done our homework uh, and had some of this dialogue. We found some of our alumni out there that are in some of these jobs. And uh, uh, one interesting thing to see is how entrepreneurial they are, how creative they are. They're not necessarily making a ton of money, but they're building careers for their future and video games have given them, given them a platform to do that. So um, it's been a lot of fun for us to kind of see how that uh, looks in their jobs, how maybe they're wearing multiple hats in the video game space is just one of those hats, um, but a great way for us to learn more about what they're doing. And again, for us to, uh, to build out um, what we're what we're interested in uh, planning for our future as we think about these future uh, professional pathways. And then uh, I told you I would have some links and I know Michelle's going to make this available after the fact. So um, if you you can screenshot it now or we'll get you the slides afterwards. But uh, these are just some links to different groups um, that uh, we have found uh, really interesting to learn more about in the space. Um, I'll kind of leave it at that. Uh, my information um, is on the slides here, uh, my email address, um, my Discord ID if you're, if you're in Discord, and if you're not, and it's not something your school's familiar with, um, I'd really encourage you to, to learn more about it. Certainly, you could reach out to me and I can kind of tell you more about how we're using it and how our students really lead it. Uh, they're the ones doing it, but how it's helped us engage them and, 
and get to that broader community um, through a tool like Discord. So some links here and an offering, and um, I would just kind of end it with that and say I'd love to, uh, if there are questions or uh, other dialogue we could have here. Excellent, thank you so much. Um, it doesn't look like we have any questions right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on. However, if anybody has any questions, um, I'll definitely be able to forward those on to Heath. And as he said, I will um, be able to forward the deck on to you if you're interested, and that will have the resources that Heath shared as well as his information. The next thing that we have, this is a picture of our innovation center that we recently have opened. Um, these are some pictures of some of the rooms that are in there, and we will be doing offering different trainings. Um, and you'll be able to come in and take a look at um, the different uh, packages and resources that we have available. One of the packages that we have is an esports package. And in this, it's a one-stop shop that you'll be able to um, get anything that you need for your esports needs. Um, what we are able to do is um, look at the different things that you may need in your network. And you may ask yourself, why do you need StepCG? Well, one of the reasons is that we are able to look at your network um, and diagnose if your network is ready for you um, to have an esports program. Today, a network is pretty much like a basic utility. Um, it's really not something that um, people are just getting a network or starting a brand new network. Everybody has a network in place now. So basically, it's where you need to look at, is your network running as efficiently as it needs to be running? So um, since your network is really basically like having electricity or having water, you just wanna see if the throughput is what it needs to be. If you have latency in your network or you have any kinds of blips in your network, if you're just running email, then you're not going to really notice it. However, when you start running things like voice over IP or say you're going to start using eSports or you start running some of these more intensive um, applications, you're, you're going to start noticing that there are issues on your network. So Step CG is able to come in and look at that and we can run diagnostics on your network. We can do um, a network checkup. We're able to look at that and see what exactly the problem is and we would be able to find that out for you. This slide here basically just shows some of the different things that Step CG can offer for you. Um, these are just some of the services that we offer. Um, Joe, if you want to move to the next slide, these are a few other things that we also do um, in our, the education space as well as um, some of the other areas that we service. Um, down at the bottom, you can see these are some of the accounts that we have. So we service a lot of different education spaces from K through 12 also into secondary uh, or higher ed. Um, the, our biggest thing is that we just want to make sure that you have open, secure, and software um, educational solutions that um, are able to um, move you into the future and um, provide you with whatever your needs are. We want to make sure that you don't have any kind of bottlenecks that are preventing you from um, being able to do what you want to do, whether it's your gaming platform for your gamers or if it is um, for your security solutions or uh, any kind of basic network uh, features that you have in your net or that you're going to be using on your network. Um, one of the other things that we also want to do is we want to make sure that, um, Joe, if you want to move to the next slide, that um, your uh, whatever we use is that we are always using the leading, um, uh, all of the different leading, um, um, uh, different, um, sorry, I just lost the word for it, um, all the um, uh, available, um, um, vendors such as Via, Cradle Point, Aruba, Extreme, and we also offer certifications with all of these different um, 
players in the market. So the nice thing is that um, we have certifications that people can come in and get um, training on these different things. And we'll have other information that we'll be sending out um, for uh, people in the education space that if you have students or if you have technicians that are interested in getting any kind of certifications or additional training in any of these um, workplaces or any of these um, uh, areas, we will be able to give you more information and you'll be able to work with us and get certifications for your people in these areas. Next slide. As far as our eSports solution, we can be a turnkey solution for you. You can look at all of these different um, features that we have and see that we are able to um, take care of pretty much anything that you would need. On each of these things, um, you can see that we cover the whole gamut of things. Um, our big thing is that we have tried to bring in all the top partners together, which is what that last slide was. And um, one of the things that is very important to us is to make sure that we can negotiate the best pricing for you. We're able to get everything um, th you are able to get everything through us or even if you don't buy everything through us, You'll at least be able to know what the items are that you need and find out what it is that you need to purchase in order to have um, the eSports program um, that you'll be able to have everything that you need in your eSports program. Now, all of these things are not necessary for you to have an eSports program. These are just, um, some of these are definitely bells and whistles. So you can do um, an eSports program with just very minimal things, but if you want to have more than this, or if you want to have more than just the basics, we definitely offer everything. Um, so you'll be able to um, talk to any of your representatives from STEP and they'll be able to give you information on each of these things. Next one. In our esports package, these are the different things, um, specific things that come in the specific in the esports package. So anything from the hardware to the monitors, um, the microphones and um, mice headphones, keyboards, mouse pads. Those are all things that we work with um, other distributors. But the things that we'll actually do is come in do a network checkup. Um, we can provide you with switches, security. Um, doing any kind of extra wireless, um, extra drops that you may need. If you need a caching server, those are the types of things that will help you to have the um, experience that the gamers need to have uh, to not have any kind of latency or any kind of downtime when they're gaming. The other thing that we're also able to do, which is very unique for most companies, is that when we say that we want to be your networking partner, we mean this in every sense of the word. Not only do we want to help you with your internal network, but we also are looking to help you with networking um, with other schools. Uh, currently, I have a list of all of the schools in Kentucky, as well as schools in just other states. And what we want to do with that is um, the goal is to be able to network you with other schools, find out what exactly is it that you are doing in your school system or what you're wanting to do in your school system, such as are you building your own computers? Are you going to just buy computers? What are you looking for? And if you're a small school system or if you're a very large school system, then what we want to be able to do is to connect you with other schools that are similar to yourself. And that way you'll be able to network with schools that are similar to you and that will help you to be able to network and build out your system and connect with schools that are similar to you so that you're able to build your um, esports team and help other esports teams and districts build as um, while they're starting their teams. If you have any questions or you're looking to start your esports team or just grow the esports team that you have, here's the contact information for STEP. And you can always contact me or you can just contact um, in, in, your uh, STEP representative uh, salesperson and we'll be able to get more information to you. Um, I don't see that we have any um, questions in the contacts uh, or in the question and answer section. So. Um, 
if you do, like I said, if you do have anything, then feel free to contact us at any time. Otherwise, I think we'll go ahead and we'll be able to end a little bit early. And I appreciate everybody who's been able to join us today. Thank you very much.